everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. If it's the first time you're joining me, welcome. If it's uh, not the first time, welcome back. But in either case, I hope that you'll take the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when I do um, upcoming videos, whether either I go live or when I post videos. So all you have to do is hit the subscribe button underneath this video. You can also follow me um, if you head out to stampingwithmelva.com. You can follow my blog and subscribe to my newsletter there. Now, I want to show you how to make a loaded envelope today. I have been seeing these posted and they just have been intriguing me. And now I'm participating in a blog hop uh, that is either a mini album or a loaded envelope. And I chose to do a loaded envelope using the waves of the ocean which is a new bundle, new product suite that is available from Stampin' Up. You can order your suite uh, now. Uh, the bundle, the stamp set and dies, will carry over into the upcoming uh, annual catalog that comes out in May. I can't believe we're already talking about the annual catalog. It comes out in May. But the designer series paper, the foils, and the rhinestones, all of which I'll show you today, will not carry over and are available only while supplies last. So if you love this as much as I do, um, you're going to want to order the full suite and maybe an extra package of the foils, rhinestones, and designer series paper so you don't run out. It is just so stunning, and I will show you some of it today. All right, let me switch over to my desktop, and we'll get started. Now, the written instructions, measurements, and supply list for this loaded envelope are on my blog, and the link to my blog is underneath this video. So if you miss something as I'm going through, um, you'll find it over on my blog um, at stampingwithmelva.com. Now, this is my loaded envelope. So really what it is, it's I've made it out of 12 by 12 designer series paper. I've seen lots of different ways to do this and lots of options with adding more pockets, but... I chose to do a single 12 by 12 sheet of designer series paper that creates one big pocket at the back and one smaller pocket on the front. Um, and I have filled it with a few things. So I filled it with some of this, well, I filled it with some things to pamper. So some, some hand creams um, and some masks that I have. And then I, I've got a, a, a file, nail file, my brain went there. And I've got some hand sanitizer. And then I've also filled it with some crafting supplies. So these are some of the designer series paper, the Waves of the Ocean designer series paper. One side is all blues and whites and blacks and then some um, granny apple green, uh, Coastal Cabana. And then the other side yeah, I've kind of got them mixed up. The other side has some other colors. There's Petal Pink and Daffodil Delight, uh, Coastal uh, um, Calypso Coral, Coastal Cabana. So some really pretty colors. This designer series paper is absolutely stunning. I have gone through almost a full package. And then the foils are going to be a little hard to see, and I have missed one. They, they come in Pacific Point, Coastal Cabana, and then a matte silver, which I haven't included here. So I've got a little bit of, you know, sample so that um, the person who gets this can make some cards. And then I've given them some of the rhinestones and I've just put them on a, a little sheet of um, a, a Pacific Point and white. And then some post-it notes and I've just created a, a little uh, cover for the post-it notes and I'll show you how to do that. And then this really cute tag uh, that says you're totally, you're so totally awesome with this adorable pelican um, stamp and uh, and then some cutouts from the dies. All right, let me show you how I made this. They're really not that hard to make. Take my supplies. All right. Let's take this out. So as I said, this is cut from a single sheet of designer series paper. So I've got a sheet. It isn't the same sheet because I have, like I said, I've used almost a full sheet of paper or a full pack of the designer series paper. So you need a piece of, of 12 by 12 paper. Um, you could use cardstock as well if you have 12 by 12 cardstock. This has got the, the Pacific Point kind of swirl waves. 
And then on the other side, it's got Costa Cabana. This kind of looks like an alcohol, feel, feels like alcohol um, when you use the, uh, your blends with the, with alcohol and, and get it to kind of all move around. Now, what you want to do, and I'm using the measurements. So I followed, watched a video from the Scottish, the Scottish crafter, I believe is who I got these measurements from. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to score. Now you want to be a little gentle with this because if you press too hard when you're scoring, um, you will cut right through the paper. And I have lost my scoring blade off of this. Find. There we go. Grab my other trimmer. My scoring blade often kind of falls off of this one. It's older. Um, and it, clearly it's fallen off and I'm not sure where it's going. All right. So you're going to score. And as I said, be gentle because if you, you press too hard on your scoring blade, you will cut right through this. Um, so you're going to score at three and a quarter on both sides so i just find it easier to just take i've scored on this side just take it and turn kind of around and score on the other side at three and a quarter so there i've got my two sides so scored at three and a quarter from both sides and then i'm going to turn at 90 degrees and i'm going to score um three and three quarters and this is going to be the bottom so whichever you want to be the bottom so three and three and one quarter from each side and three and a quarter from the bottom. And then it's really just a matter, one, deciding which side you want to be your inside and which you want. So I'm going to actually do it a little different than mine. So I'm going to have these colors be my outside. So you want to fold on the score lines. gently okay and then fold up from the bottom so now we'll, we'll adhere this using uh, tear and tape adhesive um, so now you've got your pocket here and your pocket this will form a pocket as well okay so what I did was I just folded back down on each of these corners just fold them backwards down to form a, a flap and do the same on this side. Like I said, it's hard to choose which, which side you want to be the front for this. It's both so pretty. Okay, so, and then what I've done is to, to you don't have to do this, but to stop these flaps from kind of flapping upwards, I have adhered them, or, um, yeah, well, not adhered. I've Put them down using a brad so i'm just going to take my my piercing mat while this is not glued down and i'm just going to make a hole using the my take your pick tool the piercing and just make a hole there and there and i'm using the round and square brads so i'll just take two of the square brads in white and we'll just put a brad through this while it's open. I find if you do it while it's open, it's a whole lot easier than trying to get this brad, the hole poked and the brad through when, when you've got already the sides adhered together. All right, so we will just fold that back, oops. Through the hole and fold that back, okay. So you could adhere this down if you wanted to, but I just thought the idea of brads was a nice idea. Okay, so now what we wanna do is you're going to adhere these two sides together. And so I'm using tear and tape adhesive. I just decided that it probably needs to be a little stronger than say stamp and seal or your multi-purpose liquid glue. So I'm just going to put tear and tape all the way down to the end on this side so right on the edge of this one and also on the edge the inside edge of this one just because it's it's um it's going to overlap and i want it to be fully adhered down so then we can take take the backing off our adhesive or our tear and tape like that 
and that side as well. I just hope use my take your take your pick tool works really well to get that off. Okay, so now these two can fold down like that. So now I've got kind of a sleeve for the this and now the next part is to adhere and I probably should have done this part first. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. We will take some tear and tape. And we will just put on the inside here. So this is the the inside kind of closing the closing the pocket so things don't they won't fall out, but this we just don't want this to lift up. So now I've got some adhesive down on here. There we go. Lift this up and now this kind of ceiling. So now we've got a sleeve and the bottom part is is closed. Now we can fold this up on itself. And we're going to put tear and tape along these two edges so that we create a pocket. You can use your stamp and seal. You could use stamp and seal plus probably might be a little better than stamp and seal. It's stronger if you don't have tear and tape, but I like to use tear and tape for things that are going to get a little bit more wear and tear like this is as you start to put things in and people, whoever gets this pocket or this um, loaded envelope um, will be taking things out of it. So, all right, so now we've got tear and tape on the two sides. Let's just adhere them down. There we go. So you now have a pocket and another pocket. This one's a smaller pocket, um, but nothing will fall out of it. So now it's a matter of decorating it. I have cut a piece. This is the, the Pacific Point foil. And I have cut a piece that is one inch by uh, 12 inches. Um, so I just cut a strip off a 12 inch sheet. And I'm going to use tear and tape on this one as, actually, I'm going to use uh, multi-purpose liquid glue on this one. We're just going to adhere this on. So we'll just put liquid glue down this. Now, you can score it if you wanted to. Um, I'm not, you don't have to. In fact, I may have given instructions on the, the blog post to score it. Um, this one, I'm just going to um, put it on the top and then fold it around. You do want to make sure it's started to adhere on the front because it will, it can slip and slide this glue. The nice part of this glue is that it doesn't um, stick. It's, not, it's so, it's forgiving is what I'm trying to say. So now you can just fold around and adhere this one down and fold this piece over. If you want, like I said, if you want to score it, you absolutely can. And I've given you the measurements for that in the the uh, written instructions. All right, so now I've got my my decorated piece. You could just put this on the front too if you just wanted that. But now I've got my pocket edged in this amazing um, foil sheet. Okay, now that's your pocket. You're done, um, pretty much. I'm going to put some rhinestones on here. Um, so these are the uh, these are the Rhinestone Waves Basic Jewels. They come in, I think, six different colors. Is 168. Um, so they're three different sizes. You get only four of the large and medium size in each color. and But you get a whole bunch of the little ones. So I'm just going to take and put three of the large rhinestones on just on this edge just to give it a little bit of bling you can't I don't know I like to add bling so I've got that now let's make a tag so this is my tag on here so I have used the tailor-made tags which I thought I had here oh I do so these tailor-made tags are absolutely amazing they are in two shapes and multiple sizes in each shape so I have used the large, one is squared off and one is more of a uh, kind of an ornate shape with a curve. I've used the straight one, but you can use whichever you want. And then there are these amazing um, 
I call them reinforcements. So you can make them and they'll cover the hole. Um, so I've cut my, my tag out of Pacific Point and my reinforcement is out of the Coastal Cabana foil. Just to add it, it reminds me of school where, I don't know, I we used to have to put reinforcements on our loose leaf. I'm kind of showing my age so that they didn't fall out of our binders. The loose leaf sheets didn't fall out of our binders. And I always hated doing it because they didn't taste very good. I understand now you can still buy reinforcements, but they, of course, have adhesive on the back. So you don't have to lick them. You could put one on each side if you wanted to, but my tag's going to be only one-sided. All right, so I've got my my uh, reinforcement on. I've gone ahead and cut out this little pelican. is so adorable on these, these uh, blocks of wood um, posts. I can just imagine it. My husband and I love to go to Mexico, and uh, we used to love sitting watching the pelicans diving into the water um as we sat on the beach so that's what it reminds me of all right so i'm using some dimensionals i've got some black ones just because that's what i grabbed you can use ones and probably need to have small ones too oops to put up here all right so this pelican It's just going to go on this side like that. It's so cute. All right, I've also gone ahead and cut out the tag. So I stamped basic white cardstock with this You're, to You're So Totally Awesome using Tuxedo Black Memento um, and cut it out with one of the great dies that comes with the, the Waves dies. So there is a die that cuts out this pelican as well as some great Waves dies. Um, and some clouds. So I've got a cloud here. I'm going to cut this off. So I'm going to have the cloud only partly on. So we'll just take it and we'll trim this off like that. And then there is a die and you're going to have a hard time seeing this till I get them on. There is a die that cuts out two little two seagulls. So we're going to put two seagulls on little bit of liquid glue. You could use the adhesive sheets, which I didn't use, but you could use the adhesive sheets and then you wouldn't be fussing with the glue like I am. I'm getting way too much on there. So I'm just gonna take that. And now we'll use this on here. This is my second, oops. My second seagull. That's why I don't. I get glue all over my fingers, and I don't like that. <laughs> so try not to get too much glue on your on it. That's which is what I did to start with. All right, I'm just going to trim that so I don't have the full the full uh, cloud. Okay, now I'm ready to adhere this on. So I'm just going to adhere this over top. So I'm just going to use some stamp and seal on one side. This is going to be the one side that goes over top of my pelican. And then on this one, I'm going to use I'm going to use a dimensional to pop it up. So we'll just put that over like that. And then the last things that go on here is there are some amazing, these, these waves that they're extra pieces of the waves that you can cut out. And so I have just gone ahead and cut one of these. I'm going to cut it in half. And let's see if I can do this a little better so I don't get glue all over. I'm trying to just use a little bit of glue. Don't need much. This one will go here. And this one, actually, I realized my, that's okay, my tag should have, or my label should have gone a little higher up, but that's okay. We'll just put this one here. This. There we go. 
there, that's my tag. Quick and easy, somewhat quick and easy tag. All right, the last thing you need is some ribbon. For your... So I've got this pool party shear, which just really coordinates nicely. So we're going to cut a piece of this, probably about six inches or so long, and put it through. tag and then I'm going to take a piece that is maybe three inches or so and I'm going to wrap it around but I'm going to wait to adhere that um, where's my here we go so I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, dimensionals to adhere this on to my my envelope this just like that and then it just makes it easier to have this kind of in a spot where I can now take and tie this little piece of ribbon I'm gonna kind of jet myself there we go there we go. All right, hold that down. And I'm just tying this so that it won't come out. So it's just an extra piece of ribbon to go around here. Like this. And you can trim these to however long you want them. There, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, now that's your, your envelope, your loaded envelope, and you can start filling it up with whatever you want. Now, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I put in um, and the measurements. So these are the pieces. What I did for the rhinestones is I cut a strip of the rhinestones that is 6, 8, 10, 12, 12 by 4 of the rhinestones, so 12, 12 length and 4 across. And I then, I kept them on the, the uh, plastic sheet that they're on, um, but I cut a piece of um, basic white cardstock that is, let's see what this is, four and a half by one and a half. And then I piece of, cut a piece of uh, Pacific Point that is um, four and three quarters by one and three quarters, I believe. Yes, one and three quarters by four and three quarters. So adhere those two together. And then I just used um, stamp and seal to adhere my rhinestones onto here. So that makes it just a little bit of, you know, extra so that it's just not a plain strip of the rhinestones that went in. Now for this post-it note, um, I've got a stack of post-it notes. So they're three inches by three inches. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is three and a quarter by, let's grab my trimmer again. Uh, this is uh, three and a quarter by six and a quarter. And you're going to score this at three inches. Actually, yeah, Get it right three inches and three and a quarter inches. And then your, your, um, your post-it notes will just, uh, you'll fold on the score lines like that. So you've got this little quarter inch piece that will adhere to the top of your of your post-it note pad and then these just fit in here so add some adhesive on I'm just going to use some stamp and seal onto the back of your your post-it notes and you can add some adhesive onto the top of your post-it notes or you could put a piece of tear and tape adhesive onto your onto your piece of cardstock so we're just going to line them up in here even along with the edge like that, press it down and then press this top, the top into the post-it notes and you have a cover. And then I add a piece of designer series paper to it. And this piece of designer series paper is cut 
um, three inches by two and seven eighths. Because this is just a little bit off, not perfectly square. So we'll just put this on the front. And in, on mine, I wrapped some of the crinkle, um, the white crinkle seam binding around it. I actually think this, um, this pool party would look nice wrapped around it as well. So we'll do that on this one. But you can just take some ribbon and wrap it around the front cover and then tie, tie a bow. I really gypped myself. I won't be tying a bow on this one. <laughs> Make sure you give yourself enough uh, enough ribbon so you can tie a nice bow. But we'll just tie a double knot on this one. There we go. And then trim. You could add some rhinestones to this um, or pretty it up in any way. You could put a sentiment on. With, but we'll just put that. And then it's a matter of filling. So like that... Um, rhinestones you can put whatever you want if you put chocolate in here um, whatever you want to fill this up um, with um, you can, can put in here chocolate um, crafting supplies like I have um, things to pamper yourself with like I added in there and I've got some hand cream some masks I don't know who this is going to go to yet, but uh, hopefully they'll like it. I think they're really cool. You could do kids' ones. Kids' ones would be so much fun to do. And oops. So you do have to watch. If you want to put more stuff into it that um, is bigger, you're going to have to make it bigger than I have made mine. But, um, but this is good for the things that I've chosen. There. So that is a loaded envelope. Aren't they? They're so much fun. And I think the kids' ones would be so much fun to make. Um, I just decided I I would show you the uh, waves of the ocean, uh, the ocean bundle um, and sweet with this one. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed that. If you do have any questions as you're watching this video, please leave a quest leave your question under the video. Or if you found your way to my blog, leave a comment there. I'm happy to respond to your questions and answer any of them. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, happy stepping. Bye.